Hello and welcome back to Heart of the Hole. It's me today riding solo. Dan was yesterday, it's me today. I'm absolutely and utterly annihilated after Arsenal last night. That was such a long day. Um, I'm currently running on about four hours sleep, but it's deadline day and that means there's going to be content for you guys. Um, it's recorded on my phone, so you have to allow the quality. But just wanted to come on and talk about Aston Villa, I guess. That's what, that's what we do, but... Um, it just seems like we're a bit of a mess right now. It seems like Leander Dendonk is coming in, 13 million. I don't think it's a bad bit of business. I think he is a player, you know, he's played over 120 times in the Premier League. He's won titles in Belgium. He is a versatile player. He can play in, in the base of a midfield. He can play at centre back. He can, he's played in the back three. Six foot one adds a bit of height, which I think we do probably need. Um, I guess this is a lot that Wolves don't necessarily feel like he is. is needed I guess uh, is perhaps the word since they've made a few signings um, but there have been plenty of transfers in the history of football that you know picking up on someone's scraps have, have been absolutely fantastic there's too many to think off the top of my head right now so I'm not too bothered about that but what bothers me is at the time of recording it seems like Douglas Louise is off to potentially Arsenal uh, and Liverpool were linked as well but it's looking like it could be Arsenal £20 million and what what frustrates me about it? Den Donker is a fine player, and I have, I would, I would probably label him as more of a six personally. And I think Dan and I have maintained on the longest time, Villa need eights, and Villa need different eights that aren't necessarily ball carriers. And and Den Donker certainly isn't a ball carrier. That is not what he does. He's absolutely a stopper. He's up there in terms of blocks, interceptions, tackles made. They're the metrics where he excels in, and that's potentially something Villa need if they're gonna shift to a double pivot but I think if you're going to play a midfield with a double pivot one of them one of the one of your midfielders is the six he's the out and out six the sole sitter right eats everything up that's Buba's job right in this hypothetical 4 2 3 one that I have created in my mind and I think if you play Dendonka and Buba that's just a little bit too defensive now I th for me Douglas Louise absolutely has to play for Aston Villa right and this contract offer has been on the table for the longest time and it's transcended Gerard, it's transcended Dean Smith. Douglas Louise, I'm starting to maybe get the vibe that he doesn't want to be at Aston Villa. I'd just rather there be some clear communication and I don't necessarily fault the club too much for it coming down to deadline day. But it's incredibly frustrating considering that even if he does stay, the likelihood is he is going to walk away for free in the summer. Now, we only paid £15 million pounds for him, but I read a start on Twitter the other day that said the last time Villa turned a profit on a transfer was Christian Benteke in 2015, which I find incredibly hard to believe. Um, I think that doesn't count Jack Grealish because he came through the academy and whatever. Bought a player for a price, sold him on for a higher price. And when you look at the squad, feasibly, Douglas Louise is one of the only players who is one, sellable, and two, has resale value, which is absolutely crazy. Um... And we mentioned it on the podcast a few times. I thought it would be absolutely disastrous if Villa ended the window, not only losing Carney, which I don't think was terrible, but losing Douglas Louise as well. And, you know, you could argue the fact that 50 million for both of them players isn't terrible, should Douglas Louise, of course, leave today for 20 million, which is what the, the, the reports are saying. Then that isn't the end of the world, but... To lose Dougie and to only bring Den Donker in, that's... I don't have the words to describe how poor that is. I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words. I'm more... I, I, I think in different circumstances... If Den Donker was done three weeks ago, I'm going to be way more happier about this because he is a player who... As I say, he's a bit taller, he's a bit more aggressive, a bit different, a bit more, just he's a solid player. That's all I can say. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way either. There is a place for him in this Aston Villa side. There absolutely is. However, the the midfield recruiting, it hasn't gone to plan. And there was talks of Gallagher yesterday as well. And maybe if you get Gallagher and then Donker, and you maybe lose Dougie, then maybe that softens the blow somewhat. But I don't know. I honestly don't know, guys. I'd really love to know what you guys have to say. Obviously, things are spinning right now. This will go out if and when we sign Dendonka. Um, and at that point, we may not know if Dougie stays or goes. So, 
Um, obviously, when it happens, I will know, so I don't need you guys to comment and let me know that Dougie's gone. However, um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of the situation. I know it's somewhat controversial and it seems like a sticky situation whereby we're bringing in players and the manager may not even be here, which is a whole other thing that I guess we can talk about another day. But yeah, this was just a quick video to touch base. My arms are killing. Um, I couldn't do this vlogging thing, man. Podcasting's way better. Um, vlogging's definitely not for me. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this little brief transfer announcement, I guess, slightly ahead of time, but you got a box clever with this, let us know, hit a like. Tell us your thoughts in the comments section about Dendonka, how you feeling about this deal, how you feeling about Dougie, how you feeling about Villa right now. It's a bit miserable, isn't it? Up the Villa.